Hello and welcome back to Dubeki Consult. In our previous series of lectures, we've seen how we can transform a simple structural frame into a realistic model on Prota structure. So we'll be moving into the analysis and design phase. While moving into the analysis and design phase, there are some options and conditions we need to give to the software so it analyzes our structure based on those conditions and that leads us to the pre-analysis phase here are some key things we'll be looking at at the pre-analysis phase we'll get to see how we can assign end conditions to our members and we'll also define the load cases and combinations that our software will use to analyze our structure then there is need for us to provide the different grade of steel and grade of concrete then we'll also provide our reinforcement diameters that will be used in designing the different members like our columns beams and and, uh, and slabs then we insert some important story settings and project information so without wasting much time let's jump right into this uh, very class let's go ahead to define our load cases so remember from our manual calculations we always have our factored life load and dead load, which is uh, our 1.4 GK, our 1.6 QK and the rest. So we have to define this and to do that, we'll come to this analysis tab, click on building analysis. And there is an option for load combinations here. So if you click on this load combinations, you'll see that all these places, you see that this place is empty. It means that no load cases has been defined for this very structure so we can run analysis on this because it does not have any load case to consider when uh running the when it designing or when running the analysis so to insert those load cases we'll click on load generator and this will generate it as regards to the code that we've chosen which is bs8110 so if i click this you'll see it has brought out my maximum uh factor dead load which is 1.4 and maximum factor imposed load which is 1.6 just like our manual calculations as regards to bs8110 so all these are our vertical loads then there's also an option for horizontal loads here our horizontal load has to do with our notional load in case we are designing for structure that requires consideration for wind loads you can come here seek and it will also consider wind loading but for this case we are dealing with just single residential structure so it is not needed i am satisfied with this and i'll click okay so it will automatically generate your load cases for you and load combinations with this our model will be analyzed and designed considering these load conditions and combinations so after we are done with the analysis we can also see how these loads and load combinations affect our structures so we can see how the structure will behave under the various load conditions and load combinations to move on come to this part and click ok and that's it we are done with defining our load cases and combinations so the next thing to do is to select our reinforcement grid and our concrete grid and at the same time we can also select the reinforcement diameter that will be used in designing our various structural members and this part right here is displaying the already selected materials so to make modification to this we come here and click on edit materials and under our default materials if you look at the concrete columns our fcu or our concrete grade is at 20. so we can choose to click on this part and we can choose the different concrete grade in a practical scenario you will have to consider a very important point and that has to do with the level of quality control why going for a higher grade of steel and concrete so you have to ask yourself if the artisans will follow the required concrete mix in order to get the specified concrete grade and also will they get the specific grade of reinforcements considering the fact that structural engineering is a serious business and at every point in time you are dealing with lives and properties so that's a very key point to consider mostly in cases where you are not in charge of the construction process but for the purpose of this class let's stick with fc of grade 25 30. 
that's for the concrete columns then i will check my re repair grade i have 460 500 and the rest but i'm staying with 410 and i'll click ok i need uh my repair diameters to be between 16 to 25 mm so i'll click here if we open up this uh dialog box you will see that we have uh white and selected for our concrete column that's with 16 so i will untick this come to you see 13 is also selected i will untick this then we have i will leave 16 here i will leave 20 ticked i will leave 25 for worst case and uh, i will remove 32 diameter then i'll click ok again selecting the concrete grade for our individual uh, structural members since you've selected for column there is an option here that helps you to apply that same concrete grid to every other uh, structural members like your slabs and your beams you see that all of this has changed to 2530 i can't do the same thing for the reinforcement because when we get to the slab we will not be using diameter 25 to design for the slab so i will come back uh, for concrete beams i need the same thing 16 20 and uh, 25 and i'll remove 32 then for the slabs i want only y12 on my slabs so i will untick y8 untick y10 let's see this is y12 i'll tick that untick y13 untick all of this i need just y12 that's it and we don't have rib slab then for links yes for links i uh, i need just white 10 for my links i'll take this leave white 10 here and untick all of this and okay so that's basically all for this section as we've defined our fcu and our fy so moving on we'll be inserting some uh key project informations so this includes the name of the client who is designing who is checking and the rest just some uh, specific and important project informations click on parameters so when we come to this parameters uh, dialog box there are different tabs here we have for the code which you've checked earlier go back to the previous videos we've done this earlier then i'm concerned about this project information so the project header let's say we want to call this uh modeling class one proto structure then uh, designed by then check by and project number let's say this is modeling underscore o1 then project date uh i can just leave this blank or yes you can insert your date or leave this part blank and another useful part on this other aspect that we can look at is our foundations so if you look at allowable stress ratio here yeah, we can choose to insert the soil bearing capacity taken from the soil test report but i don't want to do that yet i want us to get to the foundation design level before we can insert this soil bearing capacity so i will when i'm done with this project information i will click ok the next thing is i will do my story settings come down to building setup and there's an option for edit story so if I click on this edit story, it will take me to this point. So in this point, I'll be able to define the different height of my stories. So let's say my story one was supposed to trip 3.6. I can choose to edit this as 3600. And uh, my story two is three meters. So it has added my final story height as 6.6. .6. So I can choose to edit this here. Uh, or what I do is I leave this at three meters. Because of choosing three meters earlier, then I can call this 
description as my ground floor then i can call this my first floor then the next thing i will edit here is my foundation depth so my foundation i want it to go as uh deep as one two so i will change this to 1200 mm and on this part this is my first story bottom level so the first story bottom level is talking about your dpc level so my dpc level i'll be staying with 450 mm right this is okay i'll leave my footing label as f so i will click okay and finally for this section very very important we'll be assigning our end conditions to our members going back to our product structure for the end conditions firstly i want you to observe this beam with me if you look at the beam on grid line a you will agree with me that it starts uh if you look at the vertical vertical axis it starts at axis one asteris it moves to two it moves uh let's say it's a continuous beam all through at this point but it terminates on grid line eight with same line of reasoning if we observe this beam the vertical beam on grid line eight you agree with me that it starts off at grid a and continues to grid c to grid d as series and finally terminates at grid f so we can say grid a and grid f are the start and end of this beam so in this session we'll be assigning our end conditions to our discontinuous edges only so all discontinuous edges will be assigning end conditions with exceptions of the parts that have cantilevers now there will be a separate video to discuss uh in full extent the considerations of those end moments in the process of analysis that's another detailed lecture so in the course of keeping these videos very short and simple i will appreciate if you work with me with this concept and go back to that video and understand the concept of applying end moment uh, to our structures so basically what we'll be doing is to assign a hinge end to each of those discontinuous edges i'll pull up this picture for a few seconds protostructure understands the concept of i and j so if you look at the beams on blue lines you see that the end here you see that the one going towards the right end at this point why this going towards the north ends at this point so they are both terminating at a j end so up and right uh is referred to as the j end why the ones on red which is going to the left and uh, going down which is going downwards and going towards the left are referred to as our i end then let's not forget that there are cases where the beam might just be a simply supported so it will we have both ends hinge instead of hinging just the j end or hinging just the i end let's start with one single beam we'll click on this to input our end conditions we'll click on this and right click and there's an option for update beam end conditions so when we come to beam end conditions you will see the different options there no hinges both ends hinge hinge at left end then hinge at right end which is our j so this is actually at the right end so we'll come here i will click on this and we are applying to only this beam in particular so we we'll select apply to selected beams so when we we'll click on it you will see a little dot will be uh will appear here so when this little dot appears it indicates that this beam has been hinged at this end so we'll do the same thing for this we'll come to this point right click update beam end conditions and we'll also hinge at our j end because this is ending towards uh the north is going towards the north now keep in mind that hinges will not be applied for cases where we have cantilever so we can't say we'll hinge this end because it is still continuous after this very point so so if that explanation has been clear let's try as much as we can to uh, save our time and and do this a little bit faster so let's observe these beams if we look at this it's ending on the j end so i'll click on this hold my control
so for this we've hinged this first side now let's come to this remember there is no hinge at this point this is continuous then this is ending here so i'll click on this right click update beam end conditions ending at the j end then uh, this click click right click update beam end conditions then this is going towards the eye because it's ending at the left it's ending here it's continuous at this point then when it comes here it will be hinged towards the right so update end conditions hinge at this point our circle is here and here so for this case it's ending both on the left and on the right so we'll come to update beam end conditions then we'll select both ends hinged you see because it's terminating both here and here So now we are done with updating our end conditions for all these continuous members for the first floor. Remember, this is for the first floor. So that's for the story one. So we'll go back to our story two as well. And we'll do the same thing. So I'll select this, go my control, select. and the eye end at this point we can say we've successfully assigned our end conditions to our beams both on the story one and the story two these end conditions will be considered in the process of analysis and design do wait to look out for the video that properly explains the end conditions and how they affect our structure if you found this video helpful to this point kindly like it and subscribe to our channel it helps us a lot and a big thank you to everyone that has been subscribing and we expect your feedback your questions thank you very much and have a nice day